So what makes you happy? What makes you sad? Why am I happy? Why am I sad? Today we're starting another series of videos on the brain, your mental health, what regulates mood and depression. So we're going to be talking about serotonin. So hi, my name is Jessica. I am a psychoanalyst and wellness coach and this is my channel where I talk about everything from spirituality to neuroscience to psychedelics or whatever i want to talk about so now subscribe to my channel leave your comments please share this video so more people can watch it disclaimer this video is for educational purposes only i am not a licensed mental health profession in the united states so serotonin serotonin what is serotonin serotonin is both a neurotransmitter and a hormone what's that so a neurotransmitter is something that is produced on the brain and it works on the brain and a hormone is something that travels within our blood. We're going to be covering a lot of fun things you didn't know about serotonin and what makes you happy. So fun fact number one, 90% of your serotonin is produced in the gut. So what you eat has a direct impact of how you feel. It's real. So yes, you can eat your way into happiness. You can find serotonin is a neurotransmitter and hormone or hormone that is produced in your gut when you ingest foods that contain tryptophan our body does not produce tryptophan so well, even if you do an activity that makes you happy you need to have tryptophan so your body can produce serotonin where do you get tryptophan you get it from protein mainly protein lean meats such as turkey chicken fish, chia seeds, and yes, dark chocolate. So by eating those foods, mainly protein, your body's gonna have what it takes to produce serotonin. And serotonin is produced in your gut. So 90% of it actually stays in your gut. So it's you can see like when you're not feeling well, when you're mentally not right, it affects your digestion, yes. When you're bloated, when you're constipated, when you have diarrhea, that is all serotonin playing a part in your gut and how you feel in your gut also affects your brain. But just eating tryptophan is not enough. Think of bread. Tryptophan is like the flour. To bake bread, you need water, you need heat, you need time, you need other things to make bread. So to make serotonin, you need other things such as magnesium, vitamin B6, and a bunch of other compounds that your body needs. And then you have bread you have the molecule of happiness. So how does this whole thing work? I get it, if I eat foods that contain tryptophan, I'm gonna have serotonin, but how does it work? So, science lesson 101, we have a brain, the, and our brain has a thing called the brain cells. What are brain cells? Brain cells are neurons. Neurons are, sorry my accent, is how our brain cells, is, is our brain cells and, and they communicate by firing. So when, let's say, let's say that this is a brain cell and this is a brain cell, they fire. So they, they communicate by firing electric signals to each other. And that is called a synapsis. So this right here is a synapsis. So brain cell, brain cell, they communicate. So think of serotonin as the neurotransmitter, it fires, in your brain like this brain cell brain cell brain cell brain cell and so how it goes is a brain cell is stimulated for whatever reason and then it, it releases serotonin right but it doesn't like throw the ball to the other brain cell it just fires and it takes it back fires it takes it back this is important for antidepressants which are explained later on so one brain cell fires and takes it back, fires and takes it back. This taking it back process is a process called uptake, where I release serotonin and I take it back. That's called uptake. So, for example, our body produces serotonin. Let's talk about drugs, which is a subject that I'm sure will catch your attention. So, I'm sure you've taken MDMA or ecstasy, which are the same thing. So, ecstasy, MDMA is the actual compound in ecstasy, like pure, like a crystal or powder. And then ecstasy is going to be a pill format mixed with other things. So it's going to be MDMA plus meth. I don't know. No, usually they, they mix it with things that give you energy. But the point here is, is that when you take MDMA or ecstasy, you feel really good. You feel love. You like love everyone and all of that. 
Why? Because your brain is releasing a lot of serotonin at once. So you, you go, you produce serotonin, right? And you have this reservoir of the serotonin. And then when you take MDMA, your brain releases. So your brain floats your synapses. Remember, this is the synapses, the space between your brain. So it floods your synapses with serotonin. But because it floods your synapses with serotonin, you end up having a lot of serotonin. That's why you feel so good when you take drugs. But then what happens? Then you feel so bad. Because you released a lot of serotonin, a process called down regulation happens right after. So after you release all the serotonin, the brain doesn't release any for a while to down regulate. That's why you feel bad. So all in all, you are very dysregulated person. All right, now we're already talking about regulation. I'm sure you've heard a lot, emotional regulation. What does it mean to be regulated? So we have upregulation, downregulation, we have regulation and we have deregulation. So your brain is like a thermostat, right? If you don't know what a thermostat is, is where you put the AC up and down. So let's say it's too cold, like your brain is like a smart thermostat. So if it's too cold, your brain will down regulate to make it hot right and you will then it will be hot in that case is the same as when you're too happy your brain will down regulate to make you less happy which it happens when you take drugs as i said so if it's too hot in the other case your, your thermostat may up regulate to make it colder that that way you're always in homeostasis your brain always wants to be in homeostasis so if you are too sad your brain will want to release some serotonin to make you happy to remain in homeostasis so i am a person who am very regulated my brain is in homeostasis and i feel joy all the time no just kidding no one can feel joy all the time why because of the principle of rhythm which i have none but the universe has so there's a principle called principle of rhythm one of the hermetic laws or the life is cyclical principle what does that mean that what goes up must come down so it's normal for for us for our brains for our body for any living beings to be cyclical right so sometimes there will be summer there will be spring and sometimes there will be winter what does that mean it means that when it's time like when i'm hanging out with my friends and i'm doing things i'm under the sun and i feel good and all of that it's right and my brain is up regulating it's gonna release some serotonin for me to feel good with that activity as it should but then if i am working a lot or whatever stress or whatever it's not going to release any serotonin in fact it might release other stuff that make me feel sad but that's great because a good regulated brain it's like it goes with the emotion so being emotionally regulated means you cry when you need to cry you laugh when you need to laugh and your brain knows when it's time to fire when it's time not to fire and what to fire at certain times. That is a brain who's regulated. Okay, now, what about a person that when they are under the sun hanging out with their friends, they're still sad? What's happening there? What's happening is that there's a block. What's supposed to flow, it's not flowing. What could it mean? It could mean anything from you need to eat more protein. It could literally mean anything, right? So then you go around and you do the things that are supposed to bring you joy, but you're not feeling joy. What's the name for that? The name for that typically is depression. When you should feel joy, you should feel good, but you're not feeling good. You're flat, you're numb, your emotions are not emotioning it. You are as flat, your emotions are as flat as my friend's Billy's ass. Believe me, it's flat. So what do you do? You go to the doctor. And what does the doctor say? No more monkeys jumping on the bed. No, seriously. What does the doctor say? The doctor says, here is a prescription for an antidepressant, an SSRI. I absolutely hate that the doctors do that. And that's basically the state of society. You're drugging people, 
and you're giving people SSRIs without doing a full evaluation of their health and understanding. But I also at the same time don't blame doctors because a lot of people, they want an easy exit there and they're not willing to do their work to produce more serotonin. So if you're somebody who've been taking SSRIs or SNRIs for a long time and, and your brain is all messed up, I'm not sure there's anything at this point. Just kidding, there is ayahuasca. But that's a conversation for another day. Okay, now I wanna talk to you who has taken, is taking, have a friend who's taking antidepressants, SSRIs. If that's you, say, that's me. Just kidding. No, seriously, what are SSRIs? SSRIs are selective serotonin uptake inhibitor. So that's what SSRIs means. Fun fact, SSRIs, they do not give you serotonin. They just use your current serotonin. Mm, I am so, so confused. So remember the brain cells, the neurons, right? They fire serotonin, right? As needed. But if you are depressed, anxious, like you're, there's a, there's a, there's an issue in there. What happened is that you're, you're, you're not firing the serotonin as you need to fire. So what maybe you're firing, but there's no absorption. Maybe it's, it's being reabsorbed too quickly. There's all sorts of issues. So what are SSRIs, antidepressants? They an inhibitor because it's selective serotonin uptake inhibitor. So they don't allow the reabsorption. Remember that I said that it's like a throwing and absorb. They don't allow, they block. They block the reabsorption. So whatever serotonin you have stays there. So through neurons, brain cells, they fire the serotonin, but they block. They block the uptake. So then your brain has a lot of serotonin. Your brain just has a lot of serotonin always. That's your brain on SSRIs. Yes, I know, amazing and helpful and great. So that's your brain on SSRIs. Oh my God, what does that mean? Here is what it means. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. One, I have an issue or, or something that I am having a hard time listening to the music, right? My ears, I cannot listen well. So what do we do? We can really crank up the volume for the music. If we crank up the volume for the music, sometimes it's one thing, but when then the music is loud all the time, at some point, I'm not gonna be able to listen to the music just the same because what was once like loud music is gonna be loud music always. And then it's going to stabilize. It's gonna go back to baseline, which is nothing. So when you have a lot of serotonin in your brain, always, you end up becoming flat and numb again. That's why like, then we've got to increase the dosage and all of that. Another example is, let's say right now I cook like extreme badly, like I cook, but my food is not the greatest. So whenever I go out to a restaurant, I feel really excited and joyful because it's delicious. But let's say that I grew up very rich and I grew up and I had this ex Michelin star chef working at my mansion, my castle, and the chef is making this gourmet meals for me every day, and I just grew, grew up eating all these amazing flavors of food. Do you think that when I go to a Michelin star restaurant that I'm gonna feel any joy? Likely not, right? That's why some people who are especially into cuisine, they become like overweight, right? Because then at some point you gotta add so much more for you to feel the same, right? So if, if I, let's say I grew up with a Michelin star chef and I go to a Michelin star restaurant, I probably am not feeling much. And that's the effect of antidepressants on your brain. Because it wasn't regulated, you block the reabsorption, so then your brain is floated with serotonin, and over time, that becomes, your brain becomes tolerant to that, and you become numb, and it becomes even worse. You become numb, but also on drugs. Before, you were just numb, now you're numb, but you're taking drugs, which, as I said, serotonin impacts your stomach, impacts your sex drive, it impacts other things, so it's really a whole thing, and you really wanna avoid being on SSRIs. Oh my God! 
what to do, I am depressed or whatever, and I don't want to take SSRIs or I am taking SSRIs, what to do? So if you are taking SSRIs or any other medication, obviously it's recommendable that you talk to your doctor about a plan for coming up. And it's like Ozempic. I don't want to say nothing about Ozempic, but let's say you chose to be on Ozempic. Cool. While you are on a Zempic, you want to be hiring a nutritionist, you want to be hiring a personal trainer. Oh my God, I don't have any money. Literally, ChatGPT can do all those things for you, but okay. So if you are on a Zempic, you want to be starting to have a plan for when you're going to be off a Zempic. So you're going to make your life really great. So you're going to start eating better, exercising and all those things. The same is if you're taking any medicine and I'm talking about any stimulants like Adderall, anxiety meds, OCD, whatever medicine you're taking, you're okay, I'm taking. But don't use that crutch for a long time, like start working on a plan for when you're off those medicines. So do that, right? So. Whether you're on medicine, not on medicine, how to supplement and support the natural production of serotonin. How can I have more serotonin and just feel good and joyful and just that's what we want, right? Feel happy. Everybody wants that. So it's very important. Main thing, nutrition because as I said, what you eat has a direct impact, like literally serotonin is tryptophan, which is the stuff you eat, so nutrition. Second thing, sunshine, especially in the morning. So if you take, everybody knows this, but if you take 10 to 30 minutes of actual sunshine, when you like literally go outside or sit on your balcony, it, it, it tells your body, make serotonin, make serotonin. Three, sleeping well. The more serotonin you have, the better you sleep because melatonin comes from serotonin. So if you have good serotonin, you sleep well. And if you sleep well, you have good serotonin the next day. So sleep well. And then fourth, you can take supplements such as rhodiola rose or ashwagandha to help you regulate yourself. And fifth, practices that calm you down, like calm down the parasympathetic nervous system, such as meditation, breath work, yoga, exercise, all those things are gonna help your body to be more regulated and produce serotonin. So eat well, sleep well, get sunlight in the morning, do awareness and mindful practices, exercise. So let's recap all we learned. Serotonin is produced on the gut based on the foods you eat, which is mainly protein. 90% of serotonin is produced in the gut and 10% in the brain. So a good regulated body is joyful, happy. It produces serotonin when it needs to. A dysregulated body, you're not feeling very good. You're just, you should be feeling good, but you really aren't feeling good. It means you're dysregulated. What do SSRIs do? They block the reuptake, the reabsorption of serotonin in the brain. And just eating foods that contain tryptophan isn't enough. You also wanna supplement yourself with other minerals like iron, magnesium, B6 and get tons of sunshine. So thank you for watching this video. And for more questions on serotonin, please leave your comments and please subscribe.